when you're in front of an audience, questions start rocketing through your mind. Are they getting it? Do they understand it? Is this audience really engaged? And as you start wondering these things, maybe you start thinking, geez, I have no idea. Are they getting it or are they not getting it? I really want to know what's happening here. Well, fortunately, you don't need to be in that situation. If you're aware of the signs your audience has of engagement, now, there's different levels of audience engagement. There's kind of a surface level, and then it kind of gets deeper and deeper. And at each level of engagement, your audience will do different things, and you can notice these things to notice how deep the audience engagement goes. First level is very light. Very light, not at all deep. And there are certain signs that you're at that first level. If you're there, it's okay. It's all right. It's not a, not a big deal. You get a little bit of engagement. They're sort of with you. All right, fine. But it's not as deep as you really want to go. However, it is a starting place. The place you can start and begin that level of deepening and strengthening that audience engagement. Because... You don't get to the first level, of course, you can't get to the second, you can't get to the third. It's all about finding that level of engagement. So you get to the first level, great, and then maybe, maybe you get to the second level. Second level is a little deeper level of engagement. And it's something that's necessary, that's kind of required, if you're going to really get any further with that audience. Now, it's not the deepest level. And it certainly isn't the level that's going to be the best for getting on really to get what's going on. But it is deeper than that first level. A little bit deeper, a little bit better. And you start to notice different signs. Different signs will come up when you're at the second level of audience engagement. Fortunately, they're pretty easy to recognize. You can see them. You start to see them, you think, okay, they're, they're getting a little more interested, a little bit more involved, getting a little deeper into it. That's good. It's great. And then if you make that transition to the second level, hopefully you can get to the third level. Because at the third level, the audience really starts to get it and to buy into it. That's when you really can say, okay, this audience is fully engaged. They're understanding, they're aware, there's some level of a really deep connection going on between the speaker and the audience. Somehow there is this connection going on back and forth. And it's when you get to this deep level of connection that you can really think, okay, now we're somewhere. Now, using that deep level, you can start getting your audience to do things and think about things really change their lives in ways they can't do it, just the other levels. It would really change somebody's life, you have to engage them all the way down to this third level. And so that's what you're going to find, find out about today. This three levels and how you can notice the audience begin to deepen and deepen and deepen their level of engagement in what you're talking about. And some thoughts about how to do that, how to make that happen. What it's really about to get the audience to start getting into those deeper levels of understanding. And getting at that. And once you start doing that, you start making that connection, then you're connected. And of course, being connected with the audience is better than being unconnected. Because when you're connected, then you're like, okay. Tell me more. Let me find out more about this. I'm buying into what you're saying. And if you're selling something, maybe they buy what you're selling. Because on some level, you're really getting that deep connection. You're really getting through to the audience. So now, let's start to talk about how to make your audience connection. 
right from the very beginning, there are signs your audience is engaged, and that's that first level of engagement. Simple signs. Things you'll recognize, things you'll understand, things that you can just kind of get. And they happen, and once you're aware of these things, then you've got that chance to deepen your engagement until you can get it all the way up to that third level, but just at the first level. Still, you've got something. You can look around, see the signs, and say, okay, I got something. Because if you can't even get to that first level, then there's something missing. It's time to go back and take a look at what you're doing, maybe how you're delivering it, how you're saying it. Somehow, that connection doesn't even have a chance of happening. It's just not going anywhere. It's just stop. So you want to deepen that. But if you can't get to that first level, then you know you got an engaged audience. The beginning is engaged audience. The first level is simply physical. Physical. There's a physical engagement that happens. On some level, the audience will react to you physically. And it just indicates they're starting to open up. They haven't really opened up yet. They're starting to open up. Little things you'll notice, like leaning forward. If you're talking to a person or to an audience, and you notice some people start to kind of lean backwards, it means they're kind of trying to avoid what you're saying. They're not really keen on hearing that. Now, maybe you want to shock and repel. It's possible. But if you aren't intending to shock your eyes, you notice people moving away, then that's not a good sign. What you want to do is get people leaning forward. Now, it doesn't need to be, you know, abrupt, but a little bit. You'll notice people leaning forward. You notice their eyes opening up a little bit. You notice those signs that there's some physical reaction, some little reaction. Maybe they got a cell phone and they were looking at it and they just put it down. It means they're starting to engage, they're starting to open up to what you're saying. Now if they aren't doing it, maybe be careful. If you move too close to people, sometimes that can put them off. So be careful not to just loom over people when you're talking. Have a respectful distance. A polite distance between you and the people if you're on ground level. If you're up there on stage, have an open stance. Make sure you're open to people. If you're open to them, they may be open to you. It's mirroring. If you're like this and talking, you may find people in the audience mirroring you. And that just closes you off. So if you look closed off, they look closed off. This isn't a good physical stance for the audience to have. But if you put your hands down, talking to people, looking them in the eye, you may notice that they put their hands down. They're noticing, they're leaning forward, they're paying attention. They're beginning to get a little bit more interested in what you're talking about. Getting a little bit deeper into that subject. It's like dipping your toe in the water to see what the temperature is. It's like, okay, I'm thinking about going into the water. I'm not quite committed yet. I'll dip my toe in and just see. Is it hot? Is it cold? What's the temperature of that water? That's what a physical movement is about. Just little physical movements. Now later on you'll find out about different movements that indicate different levels of engagement. But right now, the physical reaction is just very small physical reactions like leaning forward. Like putting down a distracting phone. Like eyes opening up. Some way they're, they're starting to open up, they're dipping their toe in the water and thinking, okay. Now that's the first level. Now, first level is great, but still they haven't really even kind of opened up to what you got. There is still another level you want to try to get to, and they will show them they get to this level with their body. And it's getting to that level, it's going to really help you get them even more deeper engaged in what you're talking about. Okay, you got them to the physical level. You're 
looking around and you notice that people are leaning forward. Notice that their eyes are whitening a little bit. You have your hand to your side relaxed. They are open to you. If they have some sort of phone or whatever they were trying, they put it down. They're looking up expectantly. This is open. This is great. You've got those physical things going on. Now you want to take it a little deeper. A little deeper connection and you're looking for some different things now. Before it was more about just kind of getting your hands down, putting the PDA down, putting the phone down, great. And just leaning forward, those are fine. But here at the second level, you want something a little bit more. And that you want to have something that indicates some sort of mental connection. Mental. Your speech is made up of ideas. And you want to get people to buy into those ideas. Somehow. So they're really deeply aware of them. And it's great if people are leaning forward, their eyes are opening up, great. But a thing that will ind indicate a mental idea, the idea that they're really seeing a new idea, a new idea, a new thought that they agree with, a new thought that they're open to, a new thought thinking, yeah, maybe, is the head nod. The head nod is one of the simplest, easiest ways to see they're starting to open up this new idea. Nod in their head, like, okay, yeah, all right. And people probably won't even be aware they're doing it. They'll just hear something and they'll kind of lean forward, and the head will start nodding, and that's when you know, okay, I'm getting them. They're getting it, they're agreeing with it, they're okay with it. Now, if they're leaning forward, and then they start, you know, shaking their head. Now, it could be something for a culture. Sometimes shaking your head means yes. But presuming it's not a cultural issue, that means somehow, okay, I open up to it, but I'm not quite there with it. That's not quite working. So try to be a little clearer what you're talking about. Maybe re-describe it. Maybe repeat it. And notice if that changes reactions in your audience. And be aware that some people just, they aren't going to get it and that's it. You see, is the majority of your audience nodding their head? Is there at least one person nodding their head? Build on that. Grow on that. Smile at that person. Great. Look for other head nods. Make eye contact with those people. Because those people are getting it. Those people you have a chance of really reaching on a, deep, on a deep level. Because those people are really understanding. And the head nods indicate that. Yep, head nod. Okay, I get it. Good. Get it, got it, good. Get it with a head nod, fine. And that's the thing. If you get your audience nodding their head, that's good. And you can start that as a speaker. Now, be careful you don't have a bobblehead. Some speakers do that, they're bobbleheads. They do this the whole time. However, a little bit of that can help. So, when you're talking about your idea, you want to get agreement, you can just kind of nod your head a little bit and see does your audience echo that? Sometimes, you already start nodding their head, it indicates they get it, but it also can help them to get it. It also helps them to understand and really to get that mental understanding. And just keep an eye also. There's sometimes people can just be kind of like, you see a flash, like, oh, new idea. They just kind of light up a little bit, like, oh, what? Hey, that can happen too. Or the kind of person who's like, sort of, you know, they're leaning for them, like, they look like that. Well, that means that new ideas has sunk in. So, okay, you got the physical, you got the mental. One more thing you want to get to get that really deep connection. All right, 
You're getting there. The, your audience is starting to show that physical reaction. Physically, they're starting to show, okay, yeah, I get it. They're, they're leaning forward. They're opening up. And you're thinking, all right, this is getting somewhere. And then you get those head nods. Yeah, head nods. The audience has started kind of, every now and then, like, you make a point, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. So then you're starting to make that connection. But there's still one level left to go. And many speakers don't go as far in transforming the audience because they can't quite get them to that level. But if you can do that, it can just be a game changer and just completely transform your audience. They just really buy your message and use your message. And that is getting to the emotional level. The emotional level. Now it's great. People open up to something physically. Hey, they're physically like this. All right, I'm open to this. And then I'm thinking about it. New idea. Okay, hey, hadn't thought about that before. I'm thinking about it. But if you don't make the emotional connection, they'll figure, eh, well, it wasn't for me. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. And that's the thing. The emotional connection is so important because people quite often make their decisions based on their emotions and they rationalize it afterwards. The strange thing is in order to get the emotional connection, people will have to actually be open to your idea and then mentally aware of your idea, but it's the emotional connection to your idea that ultimately will sell it. That passion, that excitement. So with the emotional, you're looking for some sort of emotional reaction from your audience. Something that indicates they're emotionally involved. One of the simplest ones is laughter. Laughter. You may have heard some speakers say, hey, you know, getting your audience to laugh is great. It indicates they're really fully involved. And that's true. They're open to the idea, nodding their heads about it, and then you get some laughter in there, great. Now, it's important if you get laughter that they're laughing at your idea. That's a whole different matter. But if you can get laughter around a situation that involves your idea in a very way that's supportive of your idea, or points out the idiocy of the opposite of your idea, then you can get some buy-in there. Because that indicates a real emotional sense of, okay, I know what's going on. Also, another thing to think about is crying. Your audience is crying or sad or something sad happens and they really get into that, oh, how sad it is. That indicates a deep emotional connection. Some way or another, laughing, crying, or some other emotion, you want your audience to really feel and be aware of your ideas at that kind of gut level. There's like, okay, there's physical level, right, great, and a little deeper, oh, I get it in the head. And then that gut level, when they just, they feel it. They feel it deep down inside of them. And they carry it with them. And it, another great reaction on its emotional level is they're just cheering. Hey, yeah. That's why some speakers try to get that reaction faked, like, how are you feeling? Just get everybody saying, yeah. Well, that's great to get people saying, yeah, but if that yeah isn't about your ideas, your thoughts, your speech, eh, you may be wasting your time and theirs. But if you can get people to say, yeah, I really want to, oh, I love these ideas, that's a way to go. Tony Robbins uses that method when he's talking about things. He'll give an idea and says, yeah, tell me, give me a yeah. Or an uh, or an R. Ah. He does that to reinforce, hey, get emotionally connected with this idea. And once you get that emotional connection with the idea, and get your eyes emotionally connected to the idea, then it's really deep lasting, it's long lasting, and it's probably going to really change things in their life, and they really get what you're talking about. 
challenge every speaker has is when they look out at the audience is figure out, do they get it? Do they understand? How deep do they get it? Fortunately, there are signs your audience gives to indicate what level they're interested in your idea. Some of the simplest sign is the physical sign. The very least involved the idea, but at least they're open to it. They're leaning forward. They put down their PDAs or their phones. They just look alert and aware. They're looking at you. You're making eye contact with them. They're making eye contact with you. Something about them says, oh, physically says, okay, I'm, I'm open to this. This could possibly convince me of something if there's a little bit more to it, it's a little bit more in depth. But at the very least, I'm open to it. I'm willing to consider it. What do you got? So you get the audience in that kind of receptive way, and you see that receptive way, then you know your idea has a chance of going somewhere. There's a chance of working out with the audience. Once you get the physical, then you want to move into the mental. The mental. And this means the audience sees the idea as something new, or at least something different, at least something important. An idea that they're, that they're willing, to, that they're not only open to, but they get. And they're willing to consider and think about. And one of the simplest examples of this happening in the audience is just head nods. Your audience starts to nod their head. That's good. Now some speakers try to key their audience nodding by nodding as they're saying things. However, if you just do this all the time, you're going to look at that bobble-headed look. Do it a little bit. You're trying to get a guy across. After the idea, you can say, yeah, makes sense, and nod your head. And then see your eyes reaction. If they nod back, great. If some people don't nod back, that's an example, that's a situation where you can say, okay, I'm going to expand on this, develop it a little bit, explain more about it. See if you can get most of the audience nodding their head to indicate that they they get what you're talking about. They aren't fully committed yet, but they've gone beyond being open to it. I'm open to it. Okay, now I get it. And there's still one level to go. And it's the most important level at all, and that's the emotional level. There's the physical level kind of here, then there's the mental level, and there's really the emotional, the gut level, where it really sinks in. You can get your audience emotionally involved in your thoughts, your ideas, what you're talking about, then most likely they're going to do what you're saying, where you're going with it. You're going to go along and say, yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. Because they're emotionally involved. And emotional involvement can happen laughing. If they laugh at stories you're telling, great, that gets them emotionally involved. Or crying, they're sad at stories you're telling. Or they start getting all pumped up at stories you're telling. That also indicates this emotional level of involvement. Tony Robbins is a master of that. He talks about all this stuff and he says, say, I, I. I always think it's kind of like a pirate. Arr, arr. But it works. People get emotionally, deeply connected to that idea and passionate about it. So if your audience starts jumping up and down, shouting, yelling, that's great. It means they're, they're passionate about things. Or again, laughing, crying, some sort of emotional reaction from the audience will indicate to you that you're really getting that emotional connection. Once you get those four levels of physical, mental, and emotional going on in your audience, then you know you got them. Then you have the certainty. All of a sudden you get a new sense of certainty when you get on stage. Like, look around. Okay, I'm seeing those three things as I go through my speech. Okay, they're getting it. And then you can be comfortable, relaxed. You don't have to worry about it anymore. They got it. You know you're making that quick connection. You know things are getting through. And as you relax more about that, you can start seeing that on stage. Plus, you start seeing your life. Okay, they're getting it. They're thinking it. They're about it. Your physical, your family, your home, your business. All those different places, you can see those three things, physical, mental, emotional, happen, showing how deep and how that it, your ideas are really connecting with the people you're talking to. So if you want to really have a good speech, and know that good speech really work with your audience, keep an eye out 
are the telltale signs of how to connect physically, mentally, and most importantly, emotionally.